very warm welcome to everyone and His Excellency High Commissioner of India to Kenya, Dr. Virendar Paul, on my show SG Live. This is Shubhrika. I hope you all are doing well. And yes, I'm super excited today. We have a very special guest on this show. His Excellency, how are you? Thank you. Thank you, Shubhrika ji. I'm delighted to be with you today. And thank you so much for asking me to join. Thank you so much. Everyone knows you. You are a star in Kenya for all the Indians. But still, let me introduce you formally. Dr. Virender Paul is High Commissioner of India to Kenya. He is 27th High Commissioner of India to Kenya. Honorable High Commissioner of India to Kenya, Dr. Virender Paul, joined the Indian Foreign Services in 1991. Before taking up his present assignment as High Commissioner of India to Kenya, he was additional secretary in the Ministry of External Affairs, dealing with multilateral engagement in India's neighborhood. Prior to that, he served as Joint Secretary at Sushma Swaraj Institute of Foreign Services, a premier institute of India for the training of Indian and foreign diplomats. He has earlier served as ambassador, deputy permanent representative of India to the United Nations in Geneva from 2016 to 2019. Deputy High Commissioner of India in London from 2013 to 2016. Minister at the Indian Embassy in Washington DC from 2010 to 2013. Director in the Prime Minister's office during 2007 to 2010 and Councillor Political at the Indian Embassy in Moscow from 2003 to 2007. He also held diplomatic positions in the Indian missions in Almaty, Vladivostok, Rome and St. Petersburg. During his other previous stints at the Ministry of External Affairs headquarters, he served in Europe East and America's division. Dr. Virender Paul holds a medical degree from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, and he speaks Punjabi, Hindi, English, and Russian. So welcome to the show once again, Dr. Virender Paul. Thank you. During your diplomatic career, you have been posted at various locations. So how do you find Kenya different from others? Well, uh, like I said, no two countries uh, are alike. Uh, you know, all the stations that I have served in the past, they have been very exciting. Uh, but there's something uh, unique about Kenya. Uh, this is my first uh, time ever in Africa. Uh, I've never uh, uh, handled relations with Africa in the past. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, I feel a little bit nervous as well because it's very, very new. Yeah. Uh, but when I arrived in Nairobi almost four months ago, uh, I, I, I think there were uh, some perceptions that I had uh, about Africa, which were based on uh, some misplaced, stereotypical, uh, media-driven, media, yeah. certain sections of media, True. certain sections of international media, they, they yeah. uh, show Africa in a particular light. Yes. Uh, and and uh, when I arrived in Nairobi, you know, I was, I was so excited uh, you know, there are a couple of things which are very striking in Nairobi, which I saw on my arrival. You know, what they say, the eternal spring. And it's, you know, all, all, all the year around. But but the greenery, the sunshine, the fruits, the vegetables, uh, you know, the wildlife and, and, and the, uh, the rest of it. And secondly, and secondly, the people, you know, the people mm -hmm. I've, I've so far met, uh, whether they are... Uh, uh, you know, African Kenyans or uh, Kenyans of Indian heritage yeah. uh, have been uh, deeply impressed yeah. uh, uh, by, by the warmth and goodwill uh, with which I'm received here. Yeah. Uh, and and, and uh, the people are so very welcoming. Uh, very and true. I think I'm going to have a great stay. Uh, yeah, here, uh, definitely, for sure. And uh, <laughs> this, this will help me. This will help me, you yeah. know, uh, to, to uh, serve India Mm. as the Indian High Commissioner in, in this beautiful country. Yeah. And you arrived in, I think, September end. It's just four months. How has been your stay in the country till now? Yes. Have you visited any of Kenyan uh, destinations? Uh, yes. You know, uh, I've been here uh, for almost four months. Mm. Uh, when I arrived here, uh, I had planned uh, to do a lot in these four months. Uh, naturally, you know, the, the virus, the changed. coronavirus yeah. hasn't been too friendly, you know, it has yeah. been very, very, uh, you know, uh, damaging uh, mm. to all of us, you know, yeah. worldwide. And and here I find that, uh, you know, there have been uh, uh, 
uh, you know, various constraints, especially meeting people, you know, traveling, uh, and and uh, uh, you know, very dutifully, you know, I have been following uh, the various COVID guidelines and directives because I believe that uh, you know to act responsibly in in these situations uh, is, is uh, protecting communities. True. Uh, so so in terms of mobility, you know, it has been rather restricted, but I've been trying to. Uh, engage with people in the government and also the civil society and uh, uh, very importantly in the Indian origin community here uh, mm -hmm. I've been trying to be uh, as active as possible yeah. uh, and and it has been a great learning experience so far so in four months uh, I, th I think I'm very satisfied uh, uh, by the response that I've got from various sections uh, uh, of the Kenyan society and the Kenyan government and, and uh, I'm quite satisfied and also, please describe us on your vision on strengthening India-Kenyan ties. Uh, relations between uh, <clears throat> India and Kenya have traditionally been very close, very friendly, very forward-looking. Uh, and, and in recent years, uh, the exchange of visits at the highest political level have given a new impetus, uh, a new strength, a new momentum uh, to this bilateral uh, partnership in diverse areas. Uh, our Prime Minister visited Kenya in 2016. Uh, a return visit by President Kenyatta uh, was held in 2017. So the two leaders have given us a very uh, uh, important, a very forward-looking roadmap uh, for us to develop this relationship into a more uh, durable uh, partnership, uh, both by strengthening the existing areas of cooperation and also explore and add new areas of cooperation. Uh, some areas which were touched upon during the highest level visits and which uh, my predecessors too had been focusing, uh, I would like to, uh, as I say, more uh, momentum, more substance uh, to these areas. Uh, these areas include uh, the potential that we have uh, in, in maritime security, in blue economy, uh, defense and security is an important area. Uh, and then we could do more in areas such as higher education, uh, science and technology, uh, more research uh, and, and uh, innovation. Uh, one more uh, area I would like to add, uh, this is uh, based on my own uh, assessment of four months or so here in Kenya, that the highly successful initiative in India of Startup India, where the youth are using the entrepreneurial energy uh, and also the fruits of uh, recent research and innovation, encouraging the spirit of innovation uh, and translating uh, those outcomes into economic benefits. Uh, this is something which uh, I would like to uh, use that experience uh, here in Kenya. Uh, and and uh, I look forward to working uh, together with my Kenyan colleagues uh, and also uh, my colleagues in the business circles uh, to make uh, uh, that happen. And according to you, what more can be done between the two? I, I think uh, what we are doing uh, with more vigor and, and uh, in a more... Uh, a monitorable way, in a more result-oriented way, in a more, I would say, what, what we say, the key target area approach. You know, we should have the targets and we should work towards those targets in a very monitorable way. Hmm. Uh, you know, we fix a timeline and try to achieve those targets. Uh, you know, our, 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 our uh, uh, targets should not be open-ended. I know, which is uh, because, actually, you know, when they yeah. Are open, <laughs> When you talk uh, about we, we diplomatic should... issues, sometimes it happens that uh, you cannot have a set time length. It's no, absolutely, time. absolutely. You know, we are fully mindful. We yeah. are fully mindful that, uh, you know, in, in uh, relations between countries, uh, you know, you can't have tangible outcomes True. overnight yeah. or, or uh, you know, in a very limited uh, period of time. Uh, but still, you know, we can have some milestones mm. uh, along the road True. towards the target yeah. and uh, that keep us going, you know, um, yeah. you know, at every stage 
the two sides uh, sitting together, yeah. uh, exchanging views, uh, experiences, um, and and also uh, thoughts for the future, uh, so that we are on the same page. In in my view, I think. Uh, this is again a very doctor-like approach. Yes, uh, which has well. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> but yes, it's good if you can achieve that in uh, you know these kind of issues. It's definitely one of the very good things which can be done. As a high commissioner, yes, you also hold a very big responsibility to spread Indian culture all around the world. I have seen other high commissioners also, the previous ones who have played a very big role in spreading Indian culture uh, in Kenya, trying to establish it. So what do you think is the strength of our Indian culture, which is actually respected and for which India is known in other countries and what more can be done for that in Kenya? Thank you for asking this question. I think this is... uh... Uh, both very interesting and uh, also very important uh, issue, promotion of Indian culture uh, abroad. In a country like Kenya, where we have, uh, uh, you know, close to 100,000 people uh, of Indian origin, I think uh, there already exists, uh, you know, a large number uh, of uh, Indian ambassadors to promote uh, Indian culture. Uh, You are doing a great job, uh, even through your uh, TV channel, uh, and, and likewise, uh, many uh, regional associations uh, are also doing uh, uh, this work of promotion of Indian culture yeah. in this beautiful country. Uh, but from the High Commission side, uh, uh, you know, we remain engaged with the Indian community. We remain engaged with also the county administrations and look for uh, ways and means, look for opportunities where uh, we can uh, promote uh, Indian culture because there's uh, a huge demand. Uh, for for uh, Indian culture in terms of uh, performing arts, visual arts, and and uh, uh, also cinema. Uh, now the aspects of Indian culture which uh, I find uh, very strong here is, is uh, the first thing is uh, the the pluralism or the diversity uh, of India. You know I see here in the community uh, the community is as diverse here in Kenya, as India itself is. You know, you talk about faith, the region, the language, uh, the costumes, and you, you, I mean, by any means, it's as diverse as India itself is. And and, uh, the Indian community is also hugely important for the High Commission also, because you represent India, uh, or you represent Indianness in in, uh, uh, this country. And we are extremely satisfied and proud uh, uh, at the level of integration that the Indian community has in the Kenyan society. Uh, I, I didn't quite know uh, until I arrived in Kenya that, uh, you know, the Indian community is the 44th tribe uh, yeah. of, of uh, Kenya. Kenya. So this high recognition uh, by this uh, country to the Indian community is, 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 is really extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, the other thing uh, which I think we could do together uh, is... is uh, what they say, India's soft power, you know, whether it's India, Indian cuisine, which is extremely popular already, <laughs> Indian cinema, uh, and, and also uh, the traditional systems. For example, uh, yoga. Uh, yoga is very popular here already. Yeah. We have a yoga teacher in the High Commission yes. and, and uh, uh, a highly qualified teacher who is uh, holding classes uh, virtually uh, every day. Uh, people are benefiting from that. Then we recently had a very good, a very forward-looking event uh, on Ayurveda, promotion of Ayurveda. And I was very pleasantly surprised at the level of interest and the enthusiasm in the society Mm. uh, to welcome uh, those uh, traditional systems. Uh, So I think there's a lot uh, for us to do. Uh, A lot has been done. Uh, A lot more needs to be done. And I look forward uh, to, um, you know, full support and cooperation from the Indian origin community uh, to to, uh, further advance Indian culture and and, uh, uh, Indian arts uh, in this country. You are a doctor, you hold a degree from AIMS. Then what inspired you to enter civil services? You know, uh, this is a question that uh, I have been often asked and um, uh, I never get tired of explaining, you know, how it happened. I was uh, 17 years of age 
when I joined the medical school, AIMS in Delhi. And, uh, you know, we all know that a teenager mind is extremely vulnerable, extremely impressionable uh, by a series of thoughts and stimuli at that young age. And uh, at that point in time, I was very excited to join medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I graduated in 86, 87. Then I did uh, a couple of house jobs in oncology and family medicine. Then I joined post-graduation. I joined MD ophthalmology, uh, eye surgery. But somewhere down the line, I realized that uh, I needed to do something else. And one of the factors that uh, made me think more about uh, making this switch over uh, was uh, uh, during those days, uh, the corporate medicine was coming up in, in Delhi. I'm talking about uh, late 80s. Uh, there was uh, a number of hospitals that came up and, and uh, I found that uh, uh, the patients were subjected to uh, price tags mm -hmm. uh, attached to ailments and their treatments. So if you are suffering from uh, a disorder or a disease A, uh, you have to pay this much amount. Mm -hmm. and, and likewise, uh, and this is something which uh, uh, I found uh, very difficult to swallow because no patient uh, falls sick uh, because he or she wants to fall sick. And, and uh, for a patient uh, to pay up large amounts of money mm -hmm. just because he or she is sick, uh, th this was something which was not easily understandable uh, mm -hmm. to me. And I thought, you know, I... Uh, can't go on in this kind of uh, 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 a medical uh, setup in that kind of an environment. And there were two options. Mm -hmm. uh, one was to continue uh, with medicine uh, in, in uh, state-run hospitals or state-run institutions, you know, whether it's patient care or research or uh, teaching and the rest of it, or I entirely uh, think of something uh, totally different uh, and I, I, I think I happened to choose the second option yeah. and I wrote the exam and um, incidentally I got through and I landed up in uh, the Indian Foreign Service and I'm really excited to be in this great service. So you are one amongst those who couldn't accept the system. You are the one who wanted to change it for good. Uh, you know, that was a different, uh, that was a different road altogether. But I think I chose to uh, quit uh, medicine and, and uh, leave it all together and look for something, uh, you know, more uh, palatable uh, to me, something that I would really enjoy. And, and uh, I must say that I joined the civil services. It is indeed a service uh, in, in a different format, uh, but I, I really enjoy being uh, in the Indian Foreign Service. It has been almost 30 years. And, and uh, it has been a tremendous journey, highly enjoyable. Yeah. So according to you, which one is more challenging, being a doctor or a diplomat? Uh, well, uh, you know, these, these, these two vocations are, are very different. Uh, I won't say, you know, one is more challenging than the other. Uh, I think uh, we can say uh, that both are equally challenging or uh, both are not challenging at all. Uh, we deal with challenges. Uh, a vocation can't be challenging uh, per se. And, and there are challenges in, in, in both these uh, professions. But there are very, uh, I find that there have been uh, a number of similarities. Uh, for instance, in medicine, uh, you come across patients. And um, in my own uh, you know, very short experience of being a medical doctor, uh, I, I never found two patients even suffering from the same disease uh, who are alike. So no two patients are alike. Likewise, in the diplomatic life, uh, no two countries are alike. Maybe. Within the same country, no two situations are alike. Hmm. So the diversity of situations is something which is common uh, to both these uh, professions. And there have been challenges. And, and uh, it has been good fun dealing with those challenges, finding solutions. Here, I would like to add that in medicine, you are con confronted with uh, situations. You know, you have a patient who's suffering from something and it is the doctor's job uh, to feel him, uh, to make him feel all right. Mm. You have to treat the patient, you have to manage the illness. Uh, in other words, it's a very uh, problem-oriented 
uh, and, and problem solving uh, profession. And when you practice medicine or when you study medicine, uh, you are dealing with questions uh, which are uh, relating to as profound um, issues in medicine, uh, you internalize that problem-solving approach, a result-oriented or outcome-oriented approach, and, and uh, it becomes second nature uh, to you. Uh, and I feel that uh, 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 this is something which uh, I learned from my years spent in Ames in Delhi, uh, you know, very rigorous training, uh, but I think I benefited a lot. And that kind of uh, approach, uh, I think I, I, I inherited from my seniors uh, there. Uh, and and uh, it has helped me a great deal uh, dealing with situations uh, as a foreign service officer. Yeah, very true. We have Republic Day of India coming. Do you have any message for all the viewers of SJ Live? No, no, the, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, to, to uh, convey uh, my best wishes on behalf of the entire High Commission of India uh, in, in Kenya, uh, the very best wishes uh, to all Indians, to all uh, Kenyans of Indian heritage. Uh, and and uh, I wish them all the very best uh, in their endeavors uh, to contribute more and more uh, to their adopted country, that is Kenya, and also to uh, make even more efforts uh, to serve as a very effective uh, living bridge between India and Kenya to further strengthen this relationship. Under the present uh, circumstances where we are still uh, going through the uh, effects of uh, this uh, very, very uh, tragic pandemic, uh, I wish all uh, uh, my fellow Indians and uh, all Indian origin community members uh, all good health uh, and I wish that uh, you all remain and stay safe and well. Thank you so much, Honorable High Commissioner of India to Kenya for giving so much time. And uh, I must say I'm fortunate to have you on my show. I am going to talk to you often on any of the upcoming issues or any of the uh, events uh, which are gonna come in, in the future. So we'll keep talking to you. I'll keep troubling you. I'll keep asking you quite a few questions which are related to the people. But thank you so much for this time and thank you so much for accepting my uh, small request. You're always most uh, welcome, Shubhrikaji. And I, I would like to thank you once again for asking me to join. Uh, under the circumstances, it was a wonderful opportunity for me yes. uh, to engage with the Indian origin community through this medium. And, and uh, the doors of the High Commission remain open. Uh, we are available uh, for any such activities that uh, meet uh, any need uh, of the Indian community in Kenya. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that was His Excellency High Commissioner of India to Kenya, Dr. Virender Paul on SG Live. This is Shubhrika signing out, but again with a promise to bring you many more big personalities on the show. Till then, take care.